Facebook is now live. And did it show up on that page yet? Let's see. Yeah, it's on the page. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So people can see it on on um, Facebook. Amen. Okay, I gotta review it. Let's see. And add to timeline. Okay, so it is there. So face people go on Facebook. Facebook, they'll be able to see it. Now let me log off of that Facebook because they have a lot of traffic. line on the recording. This call is being recorded. Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition and I am your host and teacher, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest Sea Church in Harvest, Alabama. We welcome you to this broadcast and we pray that the Lord will bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus for being who you are. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for being God and being God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord, that you woke us up this morning clothed in our right minds with a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have provided for us. You, you Lord, you provide us a roof over our heads, food on our table, clothes on our back, and Lord, you even gave us breath in our lungs and blood flowing through our veins. So Lord, we just thank you for everything that you have done for us. Lord, right now, we in the state of Alabama are dealing with uh, the path of Hurricane Harvey, Lord. It is raining and the wind is blowing here all the way up in North Alabama, Lord. But Lord, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus, because we know that this storm too will pass. Thank you, Lord, right now. Now, Lord, we just ask you that you bless us this day. We plead your blood over this technology of Facebook and conference calls. We plead the blood over everybody that's listening now and that'll listen later over their homes, over their families, over over their, their community, over their cities, their towns, their countries. Lord, we just states, we just pray, Lord, for your blood to just flow right now. We are in the month of, 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 of the time people celebrate Halloween, God, and we know that evil is, is very active during this time of the season. So, Lord, we just plead your blood right now because there's power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, welcome everyone to the to the Guiding Light Ministry Sunday School lesson. Um, the lesson today comes from uh, Exodus chapter 19, Exodus chapter 19, and the key verses that we're going to be looking at are verses 16 through 25. Uh, but to set the stage, I will talk about the previous verses in chapter 19. But let's begin reading our, our scripture, uh, Exodus chapter 19, starting at verse 16. Starting at verse 16. And I'm reading out of a New King James Version of the Bible. Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thundering and lightnings, and a thick cloud on the mountain. And the sound of the trumpet was very loud, so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. 
and Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now, Mount Sinai was, complete, was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. It, its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him by voice. Then the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain and the, the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain and Moses went up and, and the Lord said to Moses, go down and warn the people lest they break through to gaze at the Lord. Many of them perished. Also, let the priests who came near the Lord consecrate themselves, lest the Lord break out against them. But Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you warned us, saying, set bounds around the mountain and consecrate it. Then the Lord said to him, away, get down, and then come up and you and Aaron with you. But do not let the priest and the people break through to come up to the Lord, lest he breaks out against them. So Moses went down to the people and spoke to them. Amen, amen, amen. So the, the, the lesson, the lesson uh, title is the God's covenant with Israel. God's covenant with Israel. This, this is, is, is where God is consecrating um, the people of Israel and preparing them to receive the Ten Commandments, to, 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 to solidify this covenant God will have with Israel. Our memory verse for this uh, lesson is verse 17. And, and verse 17 reads like this. It says, and I want to read it out of the New King James Version. See, 17 says, And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. The key concept for this lesson this morning is God is holy. And we must treat him as such. Yes, God is holy, meaning that he's set apart. He's like no other. And, and I always like to say when I read Isaiah, the sixth chapter, he's holy, holy, holy. He's just not once holy, twice. or he's three times holy. He's set apart. Oh, hallelujah. Our message for children, our keys for kids is God is all powerful. He can cause mountains to shake and burn. He has complete control over his creation. Oh, we, we need to grab a hold of that, that God is all powerful. Oh, yes, we need to grab a hold of that because many times in our lives, we're dealing with situations and circumstances that are beyond our control. And, and if we go around with a self-sufficient attitude, then we will end up falling deeper and deeper into trouble. But thanks be to God that he is in control and we can fall down on our knees and call upon his holy name and he will make a way out of no way. And, and as the old folks, as I keep saying, our elders used to say, and we can say it too, he may not come when you want him to, but he's always on time. Oh, hallelujah. And so in this lesson, our, our aim for today is to summarize what Israel were to do and not to do at Mount Sinai. And then the biblical principle we want to get out of this lesson is to explain why it was necessary for Israel to meet God on his terms. 
Yes. And then our daily application is to um, rec uh, recruit someone to help us be accountable, an accountability partner, to help identify weaknesses in our uh, um, in our lives when it comes to our spirituality. Amen. Amen. And so the lesson, the lesson outline is in two parts: um, the sacred mountain and and the solemn message. The sacred mountain and the solemn message. Uh, as I think about this lesson, I think about as a child when uh, we would go to church and and you know how how little children are and we always want to run up to where the mic is and and the mic was was always at in the pulpit and the people would say no you can't go up in that pulpit that's sacred and I didn't understand what sacred meant and and so you know. You didn't. You didn't rush. You didn't, the children weren't allowed up there playing in the pulpit. Uh, uh, we've kind of laxed that a little bit, somewhat today. But but we tend to try to keep that part of the of the of the of the church sacred. We we, we it, it, it's set apart. It's it's holy, and so it's not something to be trifled with or made trivial. And so here it is. God wanted to meet with the children of Israel. He called a sacred meeting at a sacred mountain. And it was very interesting that he calls, calls this because this now is a pivotal part of what is going on in their journey in the wilderness. They have been delivered from, from slavery and they've been traveling now for two to three months. You know, if you look at chapter 19, it says in the third month, after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt. So it was that third month now that, that they met in the wilderness of Sinai. And now they, 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 they were at the mountain, near the mountain. And, 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 and God and Moses had a meeting at that mountain. And, 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 and God talked to Moses and told him, say, I'm really ready for the people to meet me. I'm really ready for them to know who I am, you know. And he says in verse 6, it's so powerful. He said, he says to them, he says to Moses, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are words which you will speak to the children of Israel. God was, was ready to set them apart, to make them a, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And he wanted Moses to, to convey that to the people and let them know what was going on. But there was criteria for this sacred meeting. There was criteria for this meeting. And the criteria that, 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 that God made with them uh, had them to do was first they had to consecrate themselves and and that word consecrate means you have to clean yourselves and 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 prepare yourselves to to to, to have a meeting with God to have a a, a a a an encounter with God you 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 have to consecrate yourselves oh hallelujah and 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 so that's what he told them to do and he he said look you know have them consecrate themselves. Have have the 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 uh, uh, husbands and and wives to abstain from having intimate relationships and prepare themselves. And they had three days to prepare themselves and to consecrate themselves, so that when God came to them, he he would he would see a consecrated people. They they had to wash their clothes. They had to do all of this stuff to get ready to have a meeting with God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can, can I stop right there parenthetically for just a moment? How many of us consecrate ourselves before we get ready to go to Sunday worship? Consecrate ourselves be, before we get ready to, 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 to go into worship and go into praise with God. And, and I mean, we talk about cleaning out our hearts and cleaning out our minds and our, our spirits as we prepare to, to be with the Lord. 
Oh, hallelujah. Glory to his name. And, 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 and those of us, you know, I, I remember we, when our children were much younger, uh, uh, and, and I was pastoring about an hour away from where I live, we had to prepare on Saturday morning to make sure everybody's clothes were ready to make sure that, 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 that there was going to be breakfast ready for the next morning and to do everything we had to do on Saturday. So when we got up Sunday morning and then we went to bed a little early, when we got up Saturday, I mean, Sunday morning, everything was in order so that we could get the kids in the van and we could get on that road and travel to church. That was our consecration. And, and then now, uh, my children are adults, and and I'm 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 pastoring and ministering on on the conference call lines, and so I still have times where I have to sit out and I have to consecrate myself. I, I prepare the lesson beforehand and all of that, and then when I get ready to get up on Sunday morning, I I go in, I go to the Lord in prayer, consecrating myself to even come on to a conference call. We have to consecrate ourselves. Get ourselves ready. Oh, hallelujah. And so, so, so that's what was going on. So now, now let's, let's start reading the text, verse 16, and, and see what, what, what the Lord was doing here. He says in verse 16, then it came to pass on that third day in the morning, and this is Exodus chapter 19, verse 16, that they were, that there was thunder and lightning and a thick cloud on the mountain. And the sound of the trumpet was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in uh, it in fire in in fire its smoke descended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly and when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder Moses spoke and God answered him by voice amen so this is a sacred mountain, and they're having this sacred meeting. This this meeting, uh, and I, I failed to mention this earlier, God told them, say, now, y'all put boundaries around this mountain, and no one should cross these boundaries. And so when God came down, that, that they wouldn't be caught on the other side of the boundary. So this is this is a matter of obedience to God. Doing what God says to do and how God says to do it. When it comes time to meet God, you got to meet God on his terms. And, and his terms uh, for, to the, for the children of Israel were that they would consecrate themselves and they wouldn't cross the boundaries. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, man, I just, I just, I can't help it. I have to go to, 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 to talk about our boundaries now. We, when our boundaries as Christians is to come to God in the blood of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. As long as we covered in the blood, he will hear us. And those that don't know him as, as Jesus as their Lord and Savior, if they're confessing him as their Lord and Savior and they're calling on his name, they are in the boundary too, to be able to come and talk with God. This this meeting, this this solemn uh, meeting that was going on, this uh, was 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 personal. God wanted to see the children of Israel personally. He wanted to meet them personally, and he wanted them to have a personal encounter with him. Oh, hallelujah. I love that because God is a God that is personal. He, he's not a way off and a far off. He's not a loft. He, he's a God that wants to be right here with us all the time. His presence is there for us to enjoy. And in his presence, there is power. In his presence, his sovereignty is there. We will know that he is an all-powerful, almighty God when we get into his presence. Oh, hallelujah. Grant, thank you, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. And so when he came, 
on that third day, after they had consecrated themselves, after they had washed their clothes, after the people had sanctified themselves, God came to the mountain. And that mountain, when he came to that mountain, the first thing they heard was thunder. The first thing they saw was lightning. And then they heard the sound of the trumpet. And the trumpets have, had, you know, this sound of this trumpet, that's that ram's horn blowing. This, 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 this was something that, that was from this point on uh, be a signal to the children of Israel to get ready. Whatever God was telling them to do, whether they were going into battle or whether they were coming to worship, that trumpet sound was the sound for them to get ready because the Lord is moving. The Lord is doing something. Oh, if we could hear the trumpets of God in our lives. Oh, hallelujah. That we might get ready and know that God is moving. Oh, he comes not only in visual, but he comes with sound, lightning and thunder. And then that, that, that cloud fell upon the mountain. The cloud fell upon the mountain. And, and, and when I think about when he says the cloud fell into, on the mountain, I think about the uh, 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 what is it, the Ten Commandments with Charleston Heston and, 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 and how the cloud just came down on the mountain and the thunder and the lightning. I, I get that visual from, from, from that old movie. Yes, that's how it was. And then the trumpet got very loud very loud, and the whole camp trembled. Yes, they trembled because it was so awesome. They trembled because that sound and those thunder and that lightning and that smoke was something that they couldn't even imagine ever seeing, even though they didn't see God uh, work his work before. And when they went through through, through the uh, Red Sea on dry land. They saw God's work, but they had not saw his presence. They saw his power before, but they had not seen his presence. And in his presence, there's even more power. Oh, hallelujah. And Moses brought the people out to the foot of the mountain, and they stood there. And now... Mount Sinai was not only covered with a cloud, it was completely covered in smoke. And the smoke was like a fire. And the smoke ascended like it was a furnace. Y'all have seen people's chimney snacks and chimney stacks and the smoke coming out of, that's how the fire was, the smoke was moving. Because God is a consuming fire, an awesome fire. He, he, and, and, and it just started rising up. And the people were like, wow. And then the trumpets and the sound got even louder and louder. But Moses, Moses was familiar, used to being in the presence of God. And he knew that the only thing that he could do in the presence of God was to speak to him. Oh, hallelujah. When God's presence is there, we ought to pray. And it doesn't tell us what Moses said. It doesn't even tell us how God answered. Directly. But when we look at it, we think God told him to do something. And, and, and we'll see that in our next in our next part of this section. When God speaks, we ought to obey. When God's presence is there, we ought to talk to God. Cause, Cause he wants to have a personal meeting with us and when it's so personal it also gives us privileges 
And the privilege that it gives us is that in the New Testament, we say we can come boldly to the throne of grace. We can come boldly to God. We don't have to be scared of God. God loves us and he cares for us. And so when I look at this from a New Testament standpoint, Moses has become, was the mediator between God and the children of Israel. Well, a mediator is one that stands in the gap between you and somebody else to help each other understand one another and come to terms with one another. Oh, hallelujah. I'm talking about our mediator. Our mediator is named Jesus. And, and because Jesus is our mediator, we have the Holy Spirit in us. And the Holy Spirit prays with moans and groans that we can't even understand. But the Spirit understands. And the Spirit communicates to, to God for us. And at the same time that, that the Holy Spirit is communicating with us, Jesus the Christ. He's our mediator. He's interceding on our behalf. He's sitting at the right hand of God talking, saying, don't you know that, that boy Mark? That boy, Mark McCoy, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, bless him. Lord, take care of him. Lord, please watch over him. He, 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 he's going in the wrong direction. Let's move so we can direct him in the right direction. And, oh, he's doing a good job. Oh, well done, my good and faithful servant. Keep him humble, God. Keep him, keep him in your care, God. That's that, that intercession. That's that mediation that, 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 that Jesus is doing for us right now. And so when we go into the presence of God, we're not going into the presence of God on our own. We have the Holy Spirit there with us. We have Jesus Christ with us. Oh, hallelujah. That's just so wonderful to me when I think about that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this sacred mountain, mountain was made sacred by God's presence. Because he wanted to have a personal meeting with them. Oh, hallelujah. Now let's look at our second part. Starting at verse 20. This is the solemn message. Then the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai. On top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses to the mountain. To the top of the mountain. And Moses went. God said, come on up here, Moses. I need to talk to you personally again. Verse 21 says, And the Lord said to Moses, Go down, warn the people, lest they break through to gaze at the Lord, and many of them perish. Also let the priest who came near the Lord consecrate themselves lest the Lord break out against them. But Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you warned us, saying, set bounds around the mountain and consecrate it. Then the Lord said to him, away, get down, and then come up, you and Aaron with you, but do not let the priest and the people break through to come up to the Lord, lest he break out against, against them. So Moses went down to the people and spoke to them. Oh, hallelujah. God talking to Moses. Moses talking to God. And think about this. This is an 80-something-year-old man who ascending up into the mountain. He walked up there and then he had to walk back down and then get he goes and gets Aaron because the Lord told him to and then walks back up. But, but what God wanted them to understand is that look, what I'm getting ready to do with you guys, I'm going to make you guys a holy kingdom, a, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. I'm getting ready to do some things. I'm, so, so Moses, 
you you have a privilege and and and, and they're going to have a privilege and, and and then not only that we go, they're going to have a purpose because you have a purpose so so this meeting this meeting was personal it was a uh, privilege and it was purposeful I, oh can can you hear what i'm trying to say to you when we when we come together as as a body of believers and we go to church and we go to worship God, that's 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 personal and and it's a privilege that we can worship such an awesome God. But He has a purpose for us. It's purposeful when He wants because He wants us to to not just stay in the church. You know, with our legs crossed and our arms crossed, thinking like we, oh, we got it and we got, no, he want us to go out and tell others about the goodness of the Lord, about the greatness of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so he says to them, look now, uh, um, I want the priest to be consecrated, but I don't want them to be coming up here on this mountain because at this point, I'm going to use you, Moses. Matter of fact, I'm going to use you and your brother Aaron. And, and, and so what he was setting up, this was a precursor for him setting up uh, the high priest because Aaron was the mouthpiece. He was like he was going to become the high priest for the children of Israel. And then the, 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 uh, uh, um, the other priests... They, they were going to still have to be consecrated and cleansed and all of that, but they were going to be there to serve the Lord in their various capacities. So when we get later on and we get get the temple built and all of that, you know, they had the inner court and the outer court, outer court, the inner court, and then the holy of holies. And and, and so not on under everybody could come into the outer court, but only a few could go into the inner court. It's, certain people and then only the high priest could go into the holy of holies this what was being set up god was setting that up and he was setting it up to give them a solemn message the message we'll talk about on next week because that's when god gives the ten commandments but the whole thing was God wanted the people to be ready. He wanted to give them a personal meeting. And, and he wanted them to, to understand that it was a privilege to be in his presence. And that and that it was purposeful. Because he he's leading and guiding them to be part of a, his kingdom of priests and a holy nation. God does the same thing with us. He wants to meet with us. He wants it to be personal. And he's given us his amazing grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And because of his amazing grace, we can call upon his name and be saved. And once we're saved, then he gives us a purpose for our lives. What is that purpose? To tell everybody we meet about the love of God. And you've heard me say this before and I'll say it again. Not just with our lips, but we must also do it with our lives. Are we God's loving people? People ought to know us by the love we have for one another. Oh, hallelujah. I hope this lesson has blessed you. Our points to ponder for this lesson is that God is all powerful and he has complete control over the creation. That's why he did all of those things for the mountain. And then heaven, God's presence, is a prepared place for a prepared people. God already has prepared heaven and earth. Jesus told us that it was so. He's preparing a place for us. So we have to be a prepared people consecrated unto the Lord. And then obedience is the key. Even when we don't understand all of God's ways. Yes, Moses didn't understand everything that was going on. The children of Israel surely didn't understand, but they learned to obey. 
many times we as Christians want to go up higher in the Lord, but we forget to obey the last thing the Lord told us to do. If we obey, we'll be all right. That old song, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Oh, hallelujah. If meeting God was important for the children of Israel, isn't it important to us? So let's think about how we should act when we worship and when we pray. We should always be respectful when entering the house of God, when going down on our knees in prayer and worship. We should be respectful when we worship and respectful when we pray. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father God, the God of heaven and earth, help us to live respectful of you, in awe of you, and to respect others. Help us, God, also to always be ready to hear from you and to obey your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We must come to God on his own terms. That's what we must do. We must come to God on his own terms. Always before I um, get ready to close a message, I like to go to the Lord in prayer for those that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And I call this the prayer of salvation. And I believe that if you pray this prayer, you will be saved. It is based on God's word in Romans chapter 10, verses um, um, 9 and 10 and 13. It says that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that he died on the cross and that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. And whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So let us call on the name of the Lord and confess him with our mouth and believe with our heart. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. We come right now confessing you as our Lord and Savior. We believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and that God, you raised him from the dead. Please forgive us of our sins and come into our heart. And be our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving our souls. Thank you, Lord, for making us whole. Bless us now with your Holy Spirit that we might obey your word for the rest of our lives and walk and talk the way you want us to. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you for all of this. Amen and amen. Facebook, hallelujah, we're, we're going to log off, and then we're going to be on the conference call, so if you want to have any comments, come and join us on the conference call for comments or questions or even prayer concerns, 910-218-0531, 910-218-0531, be blessed on Facebook.